This is Chris McDaniels. I like to subscribe. Subscribe to TNW Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to my other channel, Word of Chris. And subscribe to this channel, Chris McDaniels. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and both my TikToks. I'll be down there in the description box. And I'm here to do my WWE Friday Night Smackdown. May 17th, 2024 reviews. So here we go discussing about tonight's episode of Friday Night Smackdown. Now we kick off the show with the first match of the night. Now I apologize. I did meant to do my AEW Dynamite and NXT reviews. I was starting on my NXT reviews this past Tuesday. But I had stuff to do. So yeah, I could never do them. But they are going to start back next week. NXT and Dynamite and every other show. So yeah, let's go ahead and just talk about SmackDown for tonight. Now we kick off the show with the first match of the night. It was the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. So yeah, it was the WWE Women's Tag Team Champion, one half of them, Bianca Belair versus Tiffany Stratton in the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. So yeah, we'll get to this match. Uh, Bianca Belair defeated Candice LeRae last Friday on SmackDown. Tiffany Stratton defeated Mia Yim in a, uh, in a match on a live event. So yeah, that's how both of these women are in this match. But yeah, we get to this match. In this match, it was a pretty good match. The crowd was into it and everything. Great match between these two women. Um, Tiffany Stratton was going after Bianca's leg majority of the time in this match, uh, beating her down and all that, and coming up near falls. Like, Tiffany almost won a few times. And, like, this match was really good. The crowd was red hot for Tiffany, saying chanting Tiffany time and chanting this is awesome and all that stuff. So yeah, the crowd was really into this match. Like I said, it was a damn good one. Both of these women was beating the hell out of each other in this match coming up near falls a lot of times. Um, but yeah, when at one point we actually see Bianca try to hit the uh, KOD onto Tiffany, but Tiffany fought off and got off her shoulders and stuff. And then, uh, you know, she's down on the mat and uh, Bianca starts grabbing Tiffany by the legs and trying to pull her into the ring, but Tiffany's pulling on the ring apron skirt. Well, while the referee is pretty much getting Tiffany to stop doing that, Tiffany finally lets go, so the referee's putting down the ring apron skirt, fixing that up. And while he was doing that, Tiffany pokes uh, Bianca in the eyes and then hits a chop block to the back of the leg and then hits a sliding running clothesline onto Bianca. She pins her one, two, Bianca barely kicks out two. Tiffany then tries to go for the prettiest moonsault ever, but when she jumps up on the top turnbuckle, Bianca gets back up and pushes Tiffany's legs, so Tiffany kind of like lands on the top turnbuckle, like sitting in a sitting position, and then that's when Bianca grabs Tiffany, pulls her off the top turnbuckle, and then hits the KOD onto Tiffany Stratton while on one leg, and then she pins her for the one, two, three. So yeah, Bianca Belair defeated Tiffany Stratton tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match. Great match. I really liked it. It was a good one. Um, I think Tiffany should have won this match in a way, but I'm okay with Bianca winning because Tiffany will definitely get her time probably at Money in the Bank and all that stuff. So that will be great right there. Uh, but yeah, Bianca Belair won at the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. Now she's going to qualify into the semifinals where she can either take on Jay Cargill or Nia Jax one on one. So yeah, that match is still to come later on tonight. But yeah, then we see I think it was uh Kayla Braxton that got in the ring and she comes up interviewing uh Bianca Belair and Bianca was talking about how her leg is not one hundred percent, but she's the EST for a reason. She's gonna keep on fighting through and win the Queen of the Ring tournament. So yeah, that's what Bianca said. But then after that match we actually see uh Logan Paul walking up to Nick Aldis's office and then all of a sudden the door opens and here comes LA Knight. He walks out and then he looks at the United States Championship and says, what's up, champ? And then all of a sudden, uh, Nick Aldis comes up and he says that he just got done talking to LA Knight and he wants Logan Paul to go ahead into the office and talk to him about some stuff. So yeah, that's what happened there and they walked into the office. But yeah, it looks like uh, LA Knight is going to go after that United States Championship soon, which can't wait for that, you know? Uh, it'll, it'll be pretty cool. And he deserves the title for sure. But yeah. Uh, for that match between Bianca Belair and Tiffany Stratton, I'll give it three and a half stars as well. I'll give it. It was a good match. I really liked it. The crowd was into it and everything. Good stuff, you know. But yeah, that's why I'll give that match. And yeah, there's still more matches to come. King of the Ring uh, quarterfinals matches, and we got Jay Cargill versus Nia Jax tonight, and then that contract signing with uh, Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul tonight as well. 
But yeah, I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on Friday Night Smackdown. I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on Friday Night Smackdown. Now, before we talk about the next match of the night, we got to talk about a few segments that happened backstage. So, yeah, uh, we get to the next segment of the night where we see, I think it was Caleb Braxton or Kathy Kelly, one of the two, was interviewing uh, Jay Cargill backstage. And Jade was talking about how she's going to win uh, and defeat Nia Jax tonight and become the Queen of the Ring winner. So, yeah, that's what she says. And then Bianca Belair comes up and, uh, you know, Jade was asking her, is she, is she okay and stuff with her leg. And she said, yeah, you know, fighting Tiffany Stratton was tough. But she says that she can deal with it. So, yeah, that's what she says. And, yeah, uh, both of them was hyping each other up. And then after that, we see L.A. Knight getting ready backstage, uh, you know, ready for his match and stuff. And then while he was getting interviewed and stuff, we see Carmelo Hayes interrupting him because L.A. Knight was talking about how he's going to win the King of the Ring tournament. And Melo was telling him that he's not going to be the one winning. It's going to be him because he's going to defeat Randy Orton tonight. And, yeah, that's what Mello was talking about. And then L.A. Knight was talking about how he can get hit with a BFT as well. And both of them was going back and forth and stuff. It was a pretty good promo between both of them backstage. And, yeah, uh, L.A. Knight pretty much told him to stay, he's out, stay out of his way. And he'll take care of the bloodline tonight as well. So, yeah, that's what L.A. Knight says. And then we see Tamatonga and all of them getting ready backstage. And, you know, so let's go with getting Tamatongo ready for his match. So, yeah, that's what happened there. And then we get to the next match of the night. It was LA Knight versus Tamatonga with Tonga Loa, Solo Sokoa, and Paul Heyman, the bloodline at ringside. So, yeah, we get to this match, and this match is okay. Uh, both of them was beating the hell out of each other and stuff in this match. And then we see LA Knight taking control of this match, hitting that power slam onto him and hitting that elbow drop onto him. He was waiting for Tama to get back up to his feet so he could hit the BFT onto him up until Tonga Loa pulls Tama Tonga out of the ring. And then that's where LA Knight comes running up with a drop kick onto Tonga Loa, taking him out. He grabs uh, Tonga and then throws him back into the ring. And then he's getting face to face with Solo and the referee's telling Solo to back up and stuff. And the LA Knight finally got his focus off him. He gets back into the ring. And as soon as he gets back into the ring, he gets hit with that flatliner move by Tama Tonga. And Tama Tonga pins him for the three count. So yeah. Tamatanga defeated LA Knight tonight in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament. That's what happened. It was a good one. And yeah, Tamatanga advances to the semifinals of the King of the Ring tournament. But yeah, a uh, decent match. I'll give that match uh, two and a half stars. That's why I'll give that one. But yeah, that's what happened there. Still to come later on tonight, we'll see Randy Orton versus Carmelo Hayes in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament. Not only that, we'll see uh, Jay Cargill versus. Nia Jax in the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament tonight. And up next, we're going to be seeing Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul doing a contract signing up next. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing to happen on Friday Night Smackdown. Now, before we talk about the next segment of the night, we got to talk about a different segment that happened backstage. So, yeah, we see LA Knight walking around backstage, and Carmelo Hayes comes up and he says, Oh, look, you couldn't get the job done out there, huh? And then all of a sudden, LA Knight was like, oh, you're still talking, huh? And then he pushes the hell out of Carmelo Hayes. And then both of them was about to get into and they was both getting held back and stuff. So, yeah, uh, that's what happened there. Uh, definitely go and get that feud soon. It looks like that's going to be like Carmelo Hayes' first feud on the main roster, which I'm okay with it, you know? Both of them can talk on the mic pretty good and stuff. And, yeah, uh, I'm okay with it, you know? But, yeah, then... After that, we get to the next segment of the night where we see uh, Nick Aldis. He is in the ring, and he is doing the contract signing, and he introduces the United States champion, Logan Paul. He comes out there with his lawyer and a couple of guys from Prime and all that stuff. They go out there, and then he introduces the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, Cody Rhodes. He comes out there as well. And, you know, they're getting the contract signing under what underway and all that stuff, and uh, pretty much Logan Paul... Uh, starts talking, talking about how he is going to be the one to defeat Cody Rhodes and win that title at King and Queen of the Ring. So, yeah, that's what he was talking about there. And then Cody Rhodes has some words for Logan Paul. And he starts talking about war games from 32 years ago in Jacksonville, Florida, because they are in Jacksonville tonight. And then he was talking about how all these guys out here are fans. And he says that there's one thing about you, Logan Paul, and you're not a fan. And he says that we're, we consider you more as a tourist because 
all you're doing is just walking through WWE to make moments and stuff and leave out. So yeah, that's what uh, Cody Rhodes says to Logan Paul. Logan Paul was not happy about that. And then Logan was talking about the contract and all that stuff. And, you know, he acted like he was going to sign that contract. But then he just rips up the contract. And he says that he got his lawyer to make a new contract. Because he says that he... And he got that new contract made. And he was talking about how he don't need to put his title on the line because Cody Rhodes never earned the opportunity. He don't deserve it and all that stuff. So he says why he got to why does he gotta put his United States Championship on the line? The only thing they agreed on was getting that undisputed WWE Universal Championship. So yeah, that's what he was talking about. And then Nick Aldis cuts Logan Paul off after they brought up a new contract and all that stuff because Logan Paul's like, here Nick, make it official, make it official. I already signed in all that stuff and make it official. And uh Nick Aldis was like Look, Logan, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm the SmackDown general manager. And he says that this is not what we agreed on because we have business in the office and you agreed on to have this match title versus title. And, you know, now you and your lawyer is trying to change it up and all that stuff. And they called us was getting pissed off. And then his lawyer got some stuff to say, which uh, his lawyer kind of looks like Vince. So, yeah, he looks like Vince McMahon. Pretty funny stuff with the mustache and all that stuff. And his lawyer was talking about, like, how him, how Nick Aldis is insulting his, uh, his client and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's what he was saying there. And then Cody Rose tells Nick, hey, calm down. Uh, I'll handle this. You go ahead and leave out and all that stuff. And Nick Aldis sleeps. And then Cody Rhodes uh, pretty much gives face-to-face -face with Logan Paul. And he says, that, you want me to sign that damn contract, huh? And he says, all right, cool. And he signs the contract because uh, Logan Paul has just told him to sign the contract, big boy, and all that stuff. But then Cody Rhodes tells Logan Paul that in eight days, you know, we're going to be seeing um, Jake Paul getting knocked out by Mike Tyson from a WWE Hall of Famer. And he says that, you know, next Saturday and all that stuff, uh, Logan Paul will be getting knocked out by a future WWE Hall of Famer. So, yeah, that's what Cody Rhodes says to Logan Paul. And then Logan Paul tries to attack Cody. Cody ducks and then he clothes on Logan over the top rope and stuff. And then one of uh, Logan's people from the prime or whatever tries to attack uh, Cody, but Cody beats him down and then he picks him up and power bombs him through a table, laying him out. So, yeah, that's what happened there. And uh, Cody Rhodes did sign the contract. So, I guess the match at King and, Queen, Queen, King and Queen of the Ring it will be Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul just for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. I think that's the only title on the line now. The United States Championship will not be on the line, which I'm kind of, I'm really glad about, you know? Like, I want to see this match between these two guys, but let's be honest, like, the United States Championship don't need to be on the line, and Cody Rhodes does not, see, does not need to win this title. Like, everybody kind of knows that Cody's going to be the one winning this match because it's too soon for throwing the world title onto Logan, but, you know, like, yeah, Cody don't need the title at all, uh, but yeah, that's what happened there, pretty good segment, and then after that, we see Kathy Kelly interviewing Nia Jax backstage, and Nia Jax was talking about how, uh, Jay Cargill has been hyping herself up and all that stuff, but, you know, it won't matter, because she says that she's gonna beat Jay Cargill and win the Queen of the Ring tournament, so yeah, that's what she says there. And she makes her entrance. So, yeah, next it'll be Jay Cargo versus Nia Jax one on one in the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. Up next on SmackDown. And still to come later on tonight in the main event, it'll be Randy Orton versus Carmelo Hayes one on one in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on Friday Night SmackDown. See you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing that happened on Friday Night SmackDown, we get to the next match of the night. It was. Jay Cargill versus Nia Jax in the quarterfinals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. So yeah, we get to this match. And yeah, this match, it was alright. Um, both of these women was beating the hell out of each other uh, in this match. And then at one point, Nia Jax was talking crap to Jay Cargill's daughter, saying that her mom sucks and all that. So yeah, that's what she was saying there. And then Jay was going over there beating the hell out of Nia Jax. Both of them was beating the hell out of each other, going over to Barricade and the Timekeepers area. Going up, add in all that stuff, and then Nia Jax tosses Jade over the barricade onto the floor outside of the ringside. And then uh, Nia grabs a steel chair and tries to hit Jade, but Jade grabs onto it, blocking it. She pulls the steel chair out of Nia Jax's hands and then hits Nia Jax in the back with the chair, which caused a disqualification. So, yeah, Nia Jax defeated Jade Cargill tonight by disqualification. So, yeah, Nia Jax qualifies 
into the semifinals for next week against Bianca Belair. So, yeah, uh, she qualifies. We ain't getting that match between Bianca and Jade. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So, yeah, uh, like I said, both of them was brawling and stuff, beating the hell out of each other, grabbing each other by the throat, slinging each other to the barricades and stuff. One was breaking in, they both go back over the barricade, going at it at ringside and all that stuff. A bunch of referees had to come up and pull them apart. Jade got pulled apart from her, and then she goes back at it with Nia Jax, and they got pull, pulled apart again. So, yeah, that's what happened there. For the match and all that stuff, I'll give it one star. That's why I'll give it. But I will say that was, like, the best thing that they can do right there because, I mean, even though it would be cool to see Bianca Belair versus Jay Cargill, like, that match does not need to happen right now. Um, build it up, obviously, maybe till WrestleMania or SummerSlam, one of the two. Uh, build it up, obviously, and, yeah, we don't need the match right now. Um, it will give time for Jay to get better in the ring and all that stuff, and... Yeah, we'll, we'll just get it eventually, you know. And it only happened on a random episode of SmackDown, so... And on the tape one at that, so, yeah. I think we'll get enough. That match don't need to happen at the moment, you know. And the best thing to do was to have Jay Cargill lose by disqualification. At least she ain't getting pinned or tapping out or whatever, so... That's even better. So, yeah, ending it by DQ. Smart move from WWE right there. But, yeah, uh, up next we'll be seeing DIY versus... Uh, like Auto the Phantasma up next in a tag team match. So yeah, that match is up next. And yeah, uh, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on Friday Night SmackDown, we get to the next match of the night. It was a tag team match. It was Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano DIY versus Angel and Humberto with Santos Escobar and Electra Lopez. Legado de Fantasma at ringside in the tag team match. So yeah, DIY versus Legado de Fantasma in a tag team match. And we had the uh, the WWE tag team champions, Austin Theory and Grace Waller, 8 down, down, under on commentary for this match. But yeah, this match, it was a pretty good one. Gargano and Chip was doing pretty good up against Humberto and Angel. Humberto and Angel coming close to winning this match a few times. We see Gargano hit that slingshot spear onto Humberto. And during this match, we see the QR code popping up again. Uh, it, during this match going on, and then uh, we started getting towards the ending after Gargano hit the uh, that slingshot spear on Humberto. He is a suicide dive onto Angel, taking him out. He climbs up the top turnbuckle. Santos starts distracting the referee, and then that's when Lopez gets on the ring apron, pulling Gargano's leg, and Gargano pretty much hitting on the top turnbuckle. And then the referee spots Elytra doing that, and then she pretty much kicks Lopez and Escobar out from ringside. So, yeah, while that was going on, we see Gargano and Champa hitting uh, knee in the middle onto uh, Humberto, and they pinned him for the one, two, three. So, yeah, DIY defeated Legado de Fantasma tonight in a tag team match. That's what happened. It was a good one, but, yeah, that's what happened there. So, yeah, for that match, I'll give it two and a half stars. That's why I'll give that one. But then after that match, we see uh, pretty much Corey Graves and Wade Barrett acknowledging the QR codes, and then they was talking about what happened on the – WWE uh, Twitch channel and all that stuff, all well, that stuff going on. So, yeah, that's what he was talking about there. And then after that, we see Byron Sexton interviewing AJ Styles and ask AJ Styles, where do you see him going now? And Styles says that he don't even know what he's going to do now. So, yeah, that's what he said there. But, yeah, next will be the main event. It will be Randy Orton versus Carmelo Hayes, one on one in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament up next on Friday Night SmackDown. So, yeah, the match is up next. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing to happen on Friday Night SmackDown, we'll get to the main event. But before we talk about the main event, we got to talk about a segment that happened backstage. So, yeah, we see Byron Saxton going up to interview the WWE Women's Champion, Bailey. And, uh, yeah, Bailey started talking about Jay Cargill and stuff, how she had her eyes on her and Bianca Belair and there's so many women and all that stuff. But then she gets interrupted by... Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, and then uh, pretty much Chelsea Green was blaming Bailey for Piper Niven losing to Jay Cargill last week on SmackDown for giving her bad juju and all that stuff. And Bailey was like, you know what? Instead of talking about this, let's have a match next week. So yeah, that's what she says. And she walks away. But yeah, that's what happened there. But then after that, we get to the main event. It was Randy Orton versus Carmelo Hayes one on one in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament. So yeah, we get to this match. In this match. 
it was a pretty damn good one. Uh, both of these guys beating the hell out of each other and everything, slamming each other on the announce table. A lot of times in this match coming up near falls, Mello almost won, Orton almost won. It was just going crazy. And Orton starts taking control of this match, throwing Mello onto the apron, and then hits that DDT off the second rope, which was insane. Um, and then after that, he was setting up an RKO. Mello got back up to his feet. Orton tries to hit the RKO, but Mello rolls him up, and he starts pinning him. One, two, Orton barely kicking out at two. Mello couldn't believe it, so he tries to springboard off the second rope, I guess, try to hit that clothesline or whatever. But then when he comes turning around off the second rope and stuff, he gets hit with the RKO in midair, and then he gets pinned for the one, two, three. So yeah, Randy Orton defeated Carmelo Hayes tonight in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament. So next week on SmackDown, or tonight, pretty much is taped, uh, it will be Randy Orton versus Tamatanga one-on-one in the semifinals of the King of the Ring tournament. So yeah, that's what happened there. Great match for that match and all that stuff. I'll give it four stars. That's why I'll give it, it was a great match. I'll say that was match of the night right there. Between that one and Tiffany Stratton and Bianca Belair, those two matches was uh, really good stuff. But then, after the match ended, we see Solo Sokoa, Tamatanga, Tangaloa, and Paul Heyman, the bloodline, walking out. And they come walking out. Orton pretty much grabbed the mic very quickly and starts talking. Tamatanga, he's going to beat the living hell out of Tamatanga next week on SmackDown. And how he will know the three most deadliest and dangerous letters in sports entertainment history, RKO. And he's going to be feeling it next week. So, yeah. That's what he says, and uh, he says that he is going to win that match and then go on to the finals and become king of the ring. So, yeah, that's what Randy Orton said. Pretty good stuff. But, yeah, for tonight's episode of Friday Night Smackdown, I will give it nine stars. That's why I'll give it. It was a good episode. I like the contract signing with Logan Paul and Cody Rhodes. The main event was good. The open opening of Smackdown was good. It was good stuff, you know. So, yeah, that's why I'll give tonight's SmackDown. But, yeah, that has been my Friday Night SmackDown reviews. Like, subscribe. Subscribe to Team W Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to Mother Channel, Word of Chris. And subscribe to this channel, Chris McDaniels. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and both of my TikToks. I'll be down there in the description box. And, yeah, I'll be doing my Monday Night Raw reviews this Monday. Look out for that. NXT reviews coming back Tuesday. Dynamite reviews on Wednesday. I'll be doing my predictions for King and Queen of the Ring. Uh, Thursday, and I think Double or Nothing's next week, so I'll do predictions on that as well. Never done predictions on AEW pay-per-view, but I'm going to do it. Um, Smackdown Friday, look out for that one, even though it's taped. Uh, and then I'll be talking about King and Queen of the Ring next Saturday, and then Double or Nothing on Sunday. So yeah, next week is going to be a packed week. But yeah, uh, that has been my Friday Night Smackdown reviews, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then.